It says, for all the wells of his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Mm. Mm. You know, when you follow after God, a lot of people are going to try to stop the way the Spirit is flowing in your life. When you begin to follow God and seek after His path, seek after your destiny, seek after what God has for you, there's going to be a lot of opposition from your family, from your friends, from enemies, from strangers, people in the church, out the church. Everyone wants to try to block God's anointing in your life. But look what it says here. Then finally the king got involved and said unto yeah. Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we are. God has prospered you so much, we don't even want you in our land. We don't even want you in our territory. Oh, wow. Sometimes we have to learn that it's time to move on. Had Isaac stayed where he was, he probably would have died at the sword of Abimelech. Yeah. Sometimes when God blesses us and he gives us something, sometimes we have to we forget that it still all belongs to God. Yeah. God has allowed circumstances to come into our lives. And instead of getting angry or frustrated, we need to be like Isaac and place our lives in the will of God. Job said it best. You know, I, I came into the world with nothing. Naked I came in and naked I go out. The Lord gives. The Lord what? Takes away. But bless what? Be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at verse 17. It says, Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. Now here's the interesting thing. He went from being so prosperous and having so many sheep and so many cattle and so many different things, so many servants and so many everything that he now ends up in a tent in the valley wow. of Gerar. Now, if you know anything about the way it was back in the Bible times, it's not like today. In today's time, you want to live in the valley. You know, the valley is all nice and it's built up and it's prosperous. But not back in the Bible times. Mm. People were building on the mountains. Mm. Because you needed to have a place that was safe and secure. Mm. And it's harder to fight a battle going uphill than a battle going downhill into the valley. Mm. He's wow. in the valley of Gerar. The word Gerar means annoyance. annoyance. Have you ever followed God and wondered, God, why did you drag me into this? God, I had it good before. Everything was flowing the way that it was supposed to flow. And God, it was good. Why am I here now? I remember when I was doing ministry down south in a little state of Arkansas. And, and, and God has, was building this little church that I was at. And he was building it. And he was blessing it. And the ministry was flowing. And then all of a sudden the church folk were like, we want control back of our church. Sound familiar, wow. doesn't it? And so I said, you know what? I I'm not going to fight you because this is God's ministry. And I said, God, but why? Why did you have me go there only for the, 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 the ministry to, to, to uh, just crumble on me and, and, and the people to consume me? God, do you know what you're doing? And God says, yes, I'm sending you back to the land of your father. I'm sending you back to New York. Because I, I, I've got a ministry for you to do. Your, 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 your long-term plan was never in Arkansas. You were just there temporarily. You were just there for me to bless your life and bless the people around you. But I've got somewhere else for you to go. It seems like that the plans of God crumble sometimes or, or the things that God gives you turn to dust sometimes. But we need to remember to be like Isaac and make the best of a bad situation. It says that while Isaac was in Gerar, in the valley of Gerar, look at verse 18. It says, and Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. Amen. Amen. I, 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 if you Amen. won't let me be where I am, I will bless the Lord where I Amen. am right now. Amen. Amen. If you don't want me in your church, I'll, I'll go to another Amen. church. Amen. If you don't want me in your town, I'll go to another town. Amen. If you don't want me on this job, I will I'll go, go to another go. job. Because no matter where I go, I'm going to keep on digging. Amen. I'm going to keep on doing God's work. I'm going to keep on blessing the Lord. And I'm going to keep on digging until until God gives me victory. Amen. Amen. Isaac dug again in the wells of water, 
which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines were haters. And they had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called them by the names which his father had called them. When he dug up the first well, he called it Bir Lahiroi, which means the God who lives and sees what we do. No matter what you go through, God is always watching. God is always there. God is never uh, uh, somewhere else when you need him. He's always there. And the second well he dug, he kept by his father's name, and he called it Beersheba. And Beersheba means the promises of God. He says, even though I can't see it, I know God's promises are sure. You know, we live in a generation where we want to see the promises of God all the time exercised before us. Every day, we want to see a blessing and a miracle. We want to see a promise fulfilled and a promise kept. But sometimes you've got to keep on digging, Amen. even though you see no promise. Mm -hmm. The third well he dug was Rehoboth. And Rehoboth means fruitfulness. And the beauty about Isaac digging, look at verse 19. It says, also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. They dug in the valley and found a well of springing water there. So not only was he redoing the work of his father Abraham, but he took that part of the valley and he dug. You know, it's unusual to find a, a water in the valley mm. not running water because you know water may run down the mountain but it gets stagnant and it'll make a, a marsh or a mud pit or a swamp and, and nobody wants to be there but he dug and he found running water can I go deeper can I, can I get a little deeper with this what, what the, the Hebrew word for running water is not running it's not springing it's the Hebrew word living Hallelujah. He dug wow. and he kept on digging until the Bible says Isaac discovered some living water. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am that living water. And out of your belly would flow some living water. Sometimes you got to dig through every layer that the devil puts against you until you break through and find Jesus. When you break through and find your help coming, you don't hear me on this morning. Yes, Jesus. When you can't go any further, keep on digging, and you will discover Jesus is with you. Amen. And in verse 20, it says, But the herdsmen of Gerar, they quarreled with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Esek, because they quarreled with him. You know, the word Esek means strife. <laughs> or contention. You know, Jesus said that, you know, those that love me, that you're going to get a lot of opposition from the world. You know, the, the, the world wants to try to redefine who Jesus is. They've never dug to get him. You don't hear me. They've never dug to get him. They've never have gone through some stuff to find him. But they want to say, Jesus is ours. And so the world tries to redefine Jesus. And if you ask the world who Jesus is, they say he's a good man. He's a, a philosopher. He's a teacher. He was a miracle worker. But they don't know because they haven't dug. If they dug a little bit deeper, they would find out he is God Almighty. Amen. If they dug a little bit deeper, they would find out that he is the true and the living God. If they dug a little bit further, they would find out he is the Savior of all the world. If they dug a little deeper, they would find out that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What contentions are you facing today? What opposition do you have in your Christian walk where they want to redefine who Jesus is for you? You know, we're, we're going through this crisis in marriage in America and the gay rights movement is trying to redefine who Jesus is. Jesus is now supporting gay marriage, they say. Jesus is the one that thought up gay marriage, they say. But the Bible tells a different story about Jesus. And when you Amen. dig into the Word, when you dig a little bit deeper, when you dig into the foundation, you discover that Jesus is a holy God. And He says, I will keep things holy because I am holy. Amen. Marriage is between a, a man and a woman only. Mm -hmm. mm. No matter what your obstacle to happiness no matter what your obstacle, the peace of mind, the Bible says keep on digging. Look at verse 21. 
It says, then they dug another well. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Then they dug another well. And they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Setna. The word Setna means accusation or hostility. Do you find yourself sometimes going from one battle to the next battle and never getting any rest in between? Do you find the devil's bringing one wave against you and just when you beat that wave, here comes another, and just when you beat that wave, here comes another crisis, and here comes another flood, and it seems like what's going on? Isaac was digging and he found the living water and after that he found strife. He dug another well and after that he finds hostility and accusation. It's not an easy thing to be accused. Every time you start to go forward, it mm -hmm. sometimes feels like everybody wants to pull you back. Mm -hmm. If so, you need to do what Isaac did. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 22. It says, and he moved from there and dug another Amen. well. Come on, you don't hear me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he moved from there and he dug another well. And look, and they did not quarrel over it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes you got to keep on digging until you get your breakthrough. Amen. If you can't dig over here, I'm going to dig over here. Amen. No matter what you try to stop me, slow me up, Amen. I'm going to keep on doing what Amen. God has called me to do. Amen. Mm. So he called this name Rehoboth, which means fruitfulness. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Remember, Isaac had everything. He had a hundredfold crops. He had a hundredfold sheep. He had everything you could think of. The world took it away, but God Amen. gave it all back. Amen. No matter what you lose in the kingdom, don't you dare get so stuck up on it because if it goes away, God Amen. can bring it back. Amen. Oh, they Amen. stole your VCR. Too bad. God will give you another one. Amen. Oh, they stole your brand new Jordans. So what? God will give you another one. Amen. You know, to God I live and for God I die. I'm not so caught up in the things of this world. Amen. I'm caught up in what God wants me to do. Yeah. Mm. Jesus. It may seem like you have nothing but trouble and strife plaguing your day after day mm. existence. But always know that God has a place of blessing and fruitfulness prepared Amen. for him. Amen. All you got to do is keep on digging. Look at verse 23. It says, Then he went up from there to Beersheba. Now that's interesting. Beersheba and Rehoboth were some of the names of the wells his father Abraham had dug. And he makes a full circle. And he goes back to Beersheba. And if you remember, Beersheba means the promises of God. And so Isaac had experienced through his trials and his suffering the promises of God. You know, a lot of believers want to get the promises without having gone through anything. They want to receive the blessings of God without having to strive with God and to strive with men. They want to get everything that God has for them, but they don't want to dig any dirt. They don't they want to, oh, oh, it didn't work out, I, I give up. This Christian thing, it doesn't work. I, I, I tried praying, I tried fasting, I tried reading the Bible, and I had nothing but trials and tribulations. Dig another well. Keep on digging and don't stop. Notice that it is in your darkest trial that you encounter God. Here is what you will discover when you keep on digging until God gives you the victory. Look at verse 24. Point number one, God will show up. It says, and the Lord appeared to him the same night. Isaac kept on digging and digging and digging and God gave him victory and he experienced God showing up. You will see God show up in your life at the most uh, um surprising times in your life. When you don't expect God to be there, he'll be there. Mm -hmm. Number two, God will also speak up. And the Bible says, and God said. Number three, God will remind you of his faithfulness. He said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. I was faithful to him. I'll be faithful to you. When God lets you know he's not done with you yet, he will bring back to your memory the word of God and begin to remind you that just like Daniel was in the lion's den and God was faithful then, he'll be faithful now. That 
that just like David took on Goliath and was defeated by God, God gave him favor then, he'll give you favor now. Amen. Amen. I am the God of your father, Abraham. I am the God of Daniel. I am the God of David. I am the God of Peter. I am the God of Melchizedek. Amen. I am the God of all these people. If I did it for them, Amen. I can do it for you. Amen. Then God will encourage you. God said, do not fear. Yes. God will give you all kind of strength to face all kind of things that will break a non-Christian down. They will say, you got so much coming against you. What are you going to do? I'm going to trust God. I'm going to keep on focused. I'm going to keep on pressing through. I'm going to keep on digging another well until I break through to that living water. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Number five, God will comfort you. Yes, he will. And it says in the verse, for I am with you. Yes. You know, David had to go through trials and tribulations to write Psalms 23. You know, Psalm 23 wasn't written from a theological perspective, and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. No, David had said, you know, yea, ye, ye, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yea, though I go, I have gone this road before, David says. I have gone through trials and tribulations. I thought I was going to die. I thought God had left me. But God says, I am with you through every valley of the shadow of death. You travel and my rod and my staff. They come. Yes. Knowing that God is with you in your darkest hell will give you a comfort that the world knows nothing about. The next thing is that God will bless your life. Yes, he will. The Bible says, I will bless you and multiply your descendants. Mm -hmm. I will bless you and multiply your descendants. Mm -hmm. Because you kept on digging, because you kept on being obedient, because you kept on pressing, because you did not get uh, backtracked, because you did not get sidetracked, because you did not try to get ahead of me, I'm going to bring you a blessing the world can't give and the world can't take away. Amen. And the last thing in this verse is that God will remind you that he does keep his promises. And he says, for my servant Abraham's sake. Mm. I made a promise Thank to you. your daddy Isaac. Mm. I've made a promise to bless not only Abraham, but I made a promise to bless you. Mm. If you had not gone through your trials, you would have not received this blessing. Mm. Oh. Now no, Isaac had a responsibility to receive the blessing of God. So Isaac learned a powerful lesson about living in God's victory. Number one, verse 25, Isaac worshiped God in the presence of his enemies. You know, sometimes we don't want our enemies to think that we are weak, to think that we are out of control, to think that we are crazy. But in the middle of everybody watching, what is that crazy man Isaac doing now? Every time we chase him off the land, he begins to dig wells. The only thing he's getting is dirt under his fingers and a pain in his back. And here he goes again, digging in another well. You know what? Leave him alone. Let's see what he does. If you don't think people are watching you when you go through, you are thinking wrong. You are definitely being watched by the world. And the Bible says that Isaac worshipped God in the presence of his enemies. Verse 25 says, so he built an altar there. Right there in front of everybody. Right there beside the well. He built an altar, a place of worship. He made it holy ground. Number two, Isaac prayed to God in the presence of his enemies. It says, and he called on the name of the Lord. Right there. You know, so many of us are afraid to say the name of Jesus in public. Mm. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> the man upstairs really blessed me today. I got news for you. It was Jesus. Jesus. I, I got neighbors living above me, and the man upstairs yes. never did nothing for me, but yes. Jesus did it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Number three, Isaac lived in the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord. And he says, and he pitched his tent right there. Mm. You know, once you establish that God has has moved in your life, that God has had an experience with you and a breakthrough, you need to pitch your tent right there. Ooh, 
And I, I don't mean you need to live like if you're walking down 42nd Street and uh, you're on 3rd Avenue and, and the Lord moved powerfully for you to get a tent and live on 3rd Avenue on 42nd Street. I, I mean you need to remember, you need to pitch your mind in that place. And in the future, when you begin to say, God, are you with me? You need to remember where God was. You need to remember what God did. You need to remember what God can do. And number four, Isaac continued in the work the Lord had called him to do. And it says, and there Isaac's servants dug a well. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Your enemies will be amazed that you will receive the blessings of God when you keep on digging until God gives you victory. Look at verse 26 and 27. We're almost done here. It says, then Abimelech came, who, Abimelech the king, and then the king Abimelech came to him from Gerar with Ahu, uh, sorry, Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Pichol, the commander of his army, and Isaac said to them, why have you come to me since you hate me and have sent me away from you? Don't come around me now because I'm blessed. Don't start running over my house now because God is doing something in my life. When I needed a pancake from you, you told me to go in Waffle House. When I needed some flour from you, you told me to go to Pathmark. Now because God is blessing me, why are you at my door now? You weren't there when I was down and out. Know this is our conclusion. Number one, the world will know that God is with you when you keep on digging until God gives you victory. Verse wow. 28 says, but they said, we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. Amen. Number two, the world will want to be at peace with you. Now there's a promise in the word of God that says if you keep your mind stayed on God, that he will make even your enemies be at peace with you. And Isaac is a perfect example. No matter what the adversity, he kept on digging. And verse 28 continues, So we said, Let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm, since we have not touched you, and since we have done nothing to you but good, and have sent you away in peace. You know, my friend Terry Johnson, he was in the Oregon public school system, and he had dyslexia. But back then, they didn't know what dyslexia was. Mm -hmm. And so they labeled him as mentally retarded. Oh, my God. And once the, the superintendent labeled him as mentally retarded, not a single school in Portland, Oregon, would take him in uh, for, for classes. Mm -hmm. And his mother said, I heard this little church school down the street. And she went to the church school and says, the Board of Education has labeled my son mentally retarded, but there's nothing wrong with my boy. Would you take him and give him a chance? And the school said, yeah, we'll take him. We'll give him a chance. And they found that he was dyslexic. He wasn't retarded. Mm -hmm. And they began changing the teaching mm -hmm. style mm -hmm. to accommodate him. Mm -hmm. And Terry graduated from elementary school to middle school. He graduated middle school to high school. He graduated high school to go to college. He graduated college to go to his master's. And right now, he is working on his PhD. Amen. Wow. Amen. You know, Terry had the opportunity mm -hmm. after he graduated college to go back to his hometown in Oregon, oh. hometown Portland, Oregon. And when he got in his uh, hometown, he, people had heard about how he had gone to college and, and how he had done so much and, and God had blessed him so much. They said, listen, we want you to get involved in politics. He said, I don't want to be involved in politics. They said, well, would you sit on a school board? Mm. He thought the same school board that labeled me mm. and told me that I was retarded, he said, okay, fine. I can make sure it never happens again to anybody. Wow. wow. Mm. He's sitting on a school board. Amen. And then up for review was the old superintendent. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. And they had to review him to find out if they could keep him, because he was past the age of, um, of retirement. Yeah, keep him on, you know, a, a little bit longer. Because by then he was a regular, a regular teacher now. He'd been superintendent, but then he, you know, it's that political thing, political thing mm -hmm. and became a teacher again. And when he sat down in front of that board, and my friend Terry was sitting there, Terry said, Sir, do you know who I am? And the man said, no, son, I don't know who you are. He said, my name is Terry Johnson. He said, 30-something years ago, you labeled me 
as mentally retarded. And I was banned from every school in the area. Oh my God. The superintendent wrote down, I resign effective immediately right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. You keep on following God's plans, wow. and don't you worry about who's going to sidetrack you and keep you back. God will bless you, and he will prepare a table before you yes, in the will. presence yes, of your yes, enemies. He yes, he will. And the Amen. final thing I want to say to you is that when you keep on digging until God gives you victory, that the world will realize without a doubt that there is a God. Mm. And verse 29 ends with Abimelech saying, you are now blessed because of the Lord. Mm. Now, I, I thought you might have been blessed because you had a green thumb. In that valley, I thought you might have been blessed because you were a charismatic leader with your servants. But when we took away everything from you, we could not deny there was a supernatural force at work in your life. And we now believe mm. that you are blessed of the Lord. Mm. Jesus Christ said, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and give glory to God the Father. God is glorified Amen. when you keep Amen. on digging until God gives you victory. Set us free, how could it be? I was blind, but now I see the remedy was always you when you were alone. What you in control, you can possibly go wrong. I speak life to everyone. Listening to this song, where you belong is in God's hands, won't do you wrong. He loves us all, even when we stumble and fall. All you gotta do is pick yourself up and make a call. It's the only way you'll see him better days It's okay, he gon' love you just the way you are Heal them scars, fix a broken heart, leave it up to God This is your breakthrough, what you gon' say to the one who Did it all before he made you He's willing and able to do it cause he's amazing All you gotta do is let go, begin to praise him